Greetings, greetings, and salutations. WrestleMania 37 is officially in the books, and we got to go over what happened on night two. So this was supposed to go up last night after the show, but I took an edible, and it put me on my ass. So now we're doing this at 9.45 in the morning. Mind you, I've been up since 8, and going down, going down the Reddit rabbit hole... But uh, this is what just happened. WrestleMania 37 night two. So we had uh, this country artist, Ashlyn Kraft singing America the Beautiful, whatever. Um, we opened up, fuck. We opened up with Hogan and uh, what's that boy's name? Titus O'Neil once again hosting. They, got, they came out dressed like pirates. Is whatever. Um, let's just get into the first match. So, first match of the night: Randy Orton, the Fiend. First of all, Randy's Orton, Randy's entrance was very, very long. It's very long. Um, yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, as for the fiend, he was in a hallway, and then there was some fire, some CGI, and he's, and he's kind of his new self. Then we had this giant Jack in the Box that was at ringside. And Alexa Bliss was there. Um, she, you know, turning the handle, cranking it. You know what I mean? And out popped the fiend to, yeah. The match was um, bad. Like, I was expecting so much more. At one point, Michael Cole said, <laughs> box like structure at ringside. It's a box, it's a jack in the box. You. As for points in the match, right? Um, they hit moves on each other, and near the end, the Fiend was going for Sister Abigail. Flames came from the turnbuckle, and then Alexa Bliss appeared at the top of the box, and, and some new gear with black glue, come, <laughs> glue, black goo coming from her head, and she was just staring at the Fiend. The Fiend looked at her, reached out to her. Or and spun the fiend around and hit him with an RKO, and that was it. That was the match. Now, mind you, the fiend is kicked out of everyone's finisher, and he goes down to one RKO. Then Orton left. The lights went out, and everyone was gone, and the crowd booed heavily. And that was the correct reaction. That was just. Bad. I this should have been some sort of giving match. This should have been a Firefly Funhouse match. I, nothing happened. It's just <sighs> disappointment. Disappointed. Bailey showed up. You know she was doing her thing. It's always great to have Bailey. Next up, we had the Women's Tag Team Championship match. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler defending against Natalia and Tamina. And this match actually got some time. It went 14, 15 minutes. And just watching, I thoroughly cared. I wanted to see Shayna versus um Natalia that happened right in the beginning show you kind of just how good of a technical wrestlers they are and we even got our you know our stare down our showdown between Tamina and Naya and the thing was that Tamina wanted to slam Natalia also um, Tamina wanted to slam Naya excuse me there was no Reginald which was 
shocking. We did all of this. We built up all of this. There was no Reginald. Huh? They, the woman did the best job that they could. Uh, and I was, as the match was going on, I, along with uh, a buddy of, mine, buddy of mine who I was watching the show with, and even the crowd, we were slowly getting invested more and more and more. Um, near the end, we got our, our real showdown between Natalia and Tamina. Sorry, Tamina and Naya. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, Naya was talking trash, talking about you ain't shit. I'm King Kong, bitch. Tamina punched her, gave her a body slam. She hooked the leg, but Naya kicked out. And there's a Tamina chant breaking out in the crowd, which is something I thought I would never see. Tamina took a long time to get to the top rope to hit her, hit the superfly splash. She missed. Tamina tagged an entire. Nia tagged and Shayna, which Natalia didn't see. Natalia was applying a sharpshooter on Nia. Shayna then locked in a cure for the clutch, and that was a that was a wrap. Passed out. Fourteen minutes. This wasn't a great match by any stretch of the imagination, but you made me care about Tamina, and these women try to do their best. Now I don't understand what was the point of building up Natalia and Tamina just for them to lose at WrestleMania. That that really didn't make any sense. Um, but I was fine with it. It was a lot better than the opener. I, I will tell you. I'll tell you that. Next up, we got Sammy and KO. And all I wanted was for these two men to be given time to wrestle and put their thing there. They got nine minutes. These guys can go for 40. I wanted this at least to go 15 minutes. Now, here's the thing. Logan Paul did not get involved. He kind of just sat there at ringside and he was getting booed heavily as he should. Because fuck Logan Paul and fuck Jake Paul. Those guys are stains on this planet and they should be eradicated. That might be a little too much. Somebody needs to punch him in the face, though. As for the match itself these two know each other oh so well as their best friends as they wrestled each other many many times so there's a lot of callbacks to some of their previous matches then they've hit they hit the they hit the usual spots ko was doing his thing sammy hit a few really good looking brain busters um the match opened up with just a pop-up power bomb it's like all right and then KO tried to powerbomb Sammy on the uh, the ringside apron. As you know, that's the hardest part of the ring. Remember, that's what he did to Sammy uh, when he turned on him at NXT and took the, took the NXT championship off of him. Uh, like I said before, these guys know each other so well. At, at a point, um, KO hit the frog splash. Then he went for a second pop-up powerbomb. So Sammy countered it. Package power driver. Sammy fought out. KO with an exploder and then Sammy tried for her Luva kick missed Blue Thunder Bomb near fall actually but it's Blue Thunder Bomb was a Michinoku driver I'm sorry um, KO got to his feet Sammy hit his exploder and these two were just really struggling to, to, to put each other away Near the end, Sammy just hit him with a haluva kick out of nowhere. One for a second, KO ducked it, super kick, super kick, stunner. It's a wrap. KO wins. KO's got back-to-back -back wins at WrestleMania, which is dope. And Seth has back-to-back -back losses at WrestleMania. So, um, Logan went to go check on Sammy. Look, you know how this was going to end. Logan took a stunner as well. He should. He sold it. Um, but this is this is the complete opposite of how you want celebrity involvement to be because he really did get involved. Bad Bunny, that's how you do it. You know what I mean? We had a nice little backstage segment 
where uh, Riddle ran into Kali. And then RVD showed up, and this is all I needed. This is all I needed. Uh, uh, RVD actually now has rolling papers. And it would have been a massive failure if we did not get RVD and Matt Riddle on screen together. But it was great. I laughed. It was funny. Next up, we got the United States Championship match. Matt Riddle versus Sheamus. Riddle defending his title. Um, this was a really, really good match. It went 11 minutes. And the first thing that I immediately noticed about this match was... Sheamus has kind of been on a roll, and same same thing with Riddle. Um, this was just kind of really hard hitting, punches, kicks, moves. Riddle Matt Riddle does a jackhammer, but he does his a little bit differently than Goldberg. So as you know, when Goldberg does his jackhammer, he holds you, and when he when he goes down for the slam, he's still using an armor to bring you down. Whereas Riddle, when he's ready to pull you down, he actually quickly releases his arms and grabs your back and slams on down top of you so i noticed that was a good um good little difference and pretty much this match was just brutal um they hit their moves sheamus tried to give um riddle a white noise at the top row but he, he fell he collapsed so hit it again and in the end sheamus wins with a broke I just this this bro kick dog. So Riddle's going for uh, an Asai Moon saw to, to Sheamus in the ring, and he just gets kicked in the face. Imagine, imagine when Adam Cole kicked Ricochet. That so Sheamus is your United States Championship. You're going well. Why why has the belt on him? Well, first of all, Matt Riddle wasn't even supposed to be champion. They needed to get the belt off of Bobby Lashley. The original plan was most likely to get the belt onto uh, Keith Lee first and have Keith Lee versus Sheamus at WrestleMania because that's what they were building up to. But as you know, Keith Lee is out right now. We don't know what's going on with Keith, but hopefully he's doing all right and he'll be back. Uh, I don't know where they go with Matt Riddle from here. Um, but Sheamus will do well as the champion. So I'm not super, super upset about any of this next up we got our nigerian drum fights Big E defending the IC title against apollo cruz and i was immediately disappointed because it wasn't no niggas at ringside drumming it was just a street fight with drums and cymbals and kindle sticks and shit i'm like oh fuck well wale was there to uh rap Big E to the ring Big E got the crowd hype and as the match started, these two dudes immediately got out of the ring, got a Kendo Six and started whacking each other. And we, we're using the weapons, and the crowd is clearly behind Big E. Now, I really, now, it got a little brutal. Apollo was trying to kill Big E again with the whole steps and try to just throw them back on Big E. But gee, whew, Big E hulked up, and he pretty much had this match in the bag near the end. Um,. But Dabo Kato showed up. Big E's going for the big ending. And remember Dabo Kato, he was the big dude in Raw Underground um, that got wrecked by Strowman. He gives Big E a choke slam, puts Cruz on top. One, two, three. We got a new Intercontinental Champion. Like, I knew Apollo was going to win, but not like this. Now, am I. Here's the thing. I really wish this match would have went longer than seven minutes. Oh, my God. Like, none of their matches have exceeded ten, and these two can really, really put on something just amazing. And they didn't, didn't um, get to do it. I still enjoyed it very, very, very much. Um, I like the assistance of Devil Cato with... Apollo. Now I feel like Devil Kato is Brazilian. Damn sure ain't Nigerian. That's for damn sure. But we got a new IC champion. Next uh next up. Uh, Oscar versus Rhea. Um I 
I'm not fine with the outcome of this match. The Raw Women's Championship. I'll let you know right now, uh, Rhea Ripley won. And just like how I was upset that Ask that uh Sasha lost, I'm upset that Asuka lost. Asuka doesn't have a win at WrestleMania. And I felt like them putting the title on Rhea was just to make up for last year. As for the match itself, it was a good match. Not great. Slow at times. But it was probably going to be really hard to top Sasha and Bianca from the night before. And don't get me wrong, Asuka and Rhea can do that. But something about this felt off. It was a, it was a competitive match. Um, Rhea won with the Riptide. And this just punctuates how disappointing Asuka's run as champion has been. Um, she, I don't hate Rhea. I'm a big Rhea fan. I just, I feel like Asuka, I think Asuka needs to just take time off and we got to do something because she deserves better. Rhea will be good as champion. Don't be surprised if she loses to Charlotte. I can totally see that happening. Oh, Bailey was back with Hogan and O'Neal. And... Bailey got beat up. By the Bellas. And Nikki's clearly pregnant. The crowd did not like the Bellas. We know who the Bellas are. The Bellas are not fan favorites. We wanted Bailey. And Bailey was made a fool of. She got made a fool of. The Dirty B, the WWE has had a full year to more or less do whatever they want at any time without any, with no audible fan backlash. And they have royally fucked up tonight. Let's get to our main event. Triple Threat match for the Universal Championship. Roman Reigns, Edge, Daniel Bryan. And I'm going to let you know right now, y'all. This was great. Both been, all three been on the ring. And we just... We just going to get right into it. First of all, Edge, Edge had... had this beautiful white and burgundy gear, which was really, really good, really nice. And Master starts off with Roman coming from straight for Daniel. Then he comes for Edge, and we're just punching and kicking. And immediately, I don't even think it was five minutes into the match, Jey Uso was just super kicking people. I'm like, oh, all right. I I I had. I had to bust out laughing because we we were just starting early. Jay's edge super kick. Dang was super kick. Here's another super kick. So to get rid of Jay Edge hit a uh, execution on Jay on the steel steps. Jay was dead, gone into the abyss, into the shadow realm. But this match was fast paced. It had action. And everybody just did their parts. Danny Bryan took another uh, power bomb through the announce table. I lost. Was that seven seven years ago? In the other triple threat match he was in? Um, yeah. I sh this was. This match helped to make up a lot of things. Um. Roman was doing his thing. He's trying to, you know, be be the head of the table. Edge was able to counter things, hit an execution, tried to go for a spear. He missed, and then these two ended up actually spearing each other, which was whew, that looked like that hurt. And Daniel's in the ring. He's hitting flying headbutts, gets a two count. It's all right. Here's here's the yes kicks. Um, and. Edge try to tries to tries to tries to 
clothesline Daniel Bryan. He misses, and here's the running knee. I'm like, oh, shit. Then it's a Superman punch. So, okay, everybody's out. All right. Roman tries. Edge locks in. Not Edge. Daniel Bryan locks in the yes lock. And here we are. It's 11 minutes in. And this is still a fantastic match, right? So, Edge goes... Edge is, Edge is taken out taken out of the yes lot. And Roman is getting some Roman sucks chance. I'm like, okay, shit. Man, he's doing a good job as being a heel. <sighs> Here we go. So Edge out of nowhere spears Roman's off the steps. Right? And this is uh, this is awesome champ breakout. And this really was awesome. Edge is going for the concertos. Edge locks in the cross face. Daniel comes in, locks in the yes lock on Roman. So now Roman's on two in two submissions. Edge and Daniel Bryan start headbutting each other. Bryan gets the better. And Bryan's in control. <sighs> Fucked up. Runs directly into a spear from Edge. And then Roman with a Superman punch to Edge. So here we are. We're near the end of the match. Edge hits a concerto on Daniel Bryan. <laughs> Jay Easel returns, attacking Edge. Edge fought him off. Edge speared him. Hits him with the chair. And then out of nowhere, Roman spears Edge. Hits a concerto on Edge. One, two, three. First of all, he drags Edge on top of Daniel Bryan. One, two, three. He pinned both for the three count. I did not see that coming with Roman winning. Um, this is a shocking finish. WrestleMania rarely ever ends with the heel standing tall. Roman was dominant. Roman is the head of the table. He is the face of of the company um he's not going to get cheered he is a heel he is a bad guy uh now i'm reading a lot of reports that a lot of people didn't like night two i actually expected night two to be better than night one um just just because the, of the quality of the the wrestlers on the card of night two. Where do where does our rankings? Um, how do I rate each match? Randy and the Fiend gets a two, barely a two out of five. That was just bad. <clears throat> the women's tag team type championship match. I get a three out of five. They made me care. They made me care. Sammy and KO gets a three out of five. It could have been a four or five star match if they got if they were just given more time. Like if you took some time from the women's tag team title match and put it with this, I think both matches would have been extremely much better in that in that regards. Riddle Sheamus, 3.5 out of 5. Oscar Rhea. 3.5 out of 5. The Aussie title match, 3.5 out of 5. In the main event, I'm going to give that a 4.5 out of 5. So for night 2 of WrestleMania, 37, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I gave night 1 a 7 out of 10. But I actually, now looking back at it, I'm going to give night 1 an 8 out of 10. Because it was saved by three matches. Seth and Cesaro, the Bad Bunny match, and Sasha Bianca. This show was really saved by... Tonight, last night's show was really saved by the main event. And I just feel like no match besides the main event really went into like that second or third gear. Um, it is, it's a tale of two nights. It is what it is. That's um, that's the way the cookie crumbles. So this has been what just happened. I am your host. I am Jeremy Pierce. You can catch me this this Saturday on the High Risk Wrestling Podcast. Wherever you listen to your podcast, you'll find it. Links will be in the description. 
Thank you. Um, I've learned my lesson with the edible. I'll probably I'll probably take another one. Peace. <laughs>